Hey guys, my name is Robin and in this Kids Email Marketing tutorial, I'll share quick tips on how to get the most out of Kids Email Marketing features. So the first thing I would recommend you do is to make sure your emails look like this for your subscribers and not like this. So what do I mean here? It's the profile picture, of course. It just feels way less spammy and way more professional when there is an actual profile photo showing up in someone's inbox. So if you're using Google Workspace for your email, so if you have a paid Google Workspace plan and you've set up your email through Google Workspace, then click on admin console and then over at users, you can tweak the profile picture. So if you click on one of the users you wanna change, so for example, this email address, you click on the photo and then you can change the photo. So if you don't have a paid Google Workspace account, then you can still get that profile picture show up for your kit newsletter the thing you have to do is go to this url so myaccount.google.com and then you can click on create an account so fill in your first name and last name enter your date of birth and then you want to choose use your own email address so again that is what i did with this email address over here so info at creatorac.com and then enter your email address so for example something like this and then once you're logged in you're going to click on personal info and here you can upload your profile picture so it might take a few days for the profile picture to show up like this, but eventually it will change from not having a profile picture to having a profile picture. So although this first step is not necessarily tailored towards Kit, it is very important for your newsletter to succeed and to not land in the spam folder of your subscribers. So next, there is another way to make sure we don't seem like spammers. We need to authenticate our domain inside Git. So we're gonna log in into our Git account, then go to the top right corner and click on settings. Then we're gonna scroll down a little bit and here we see email settings. So click on that. And here you can see the email addresses that are in your account currently. And if you want to add another email address you want to send a newsletters from, just click on add from address, enter your name and the email address you wanna add obviously, and then click on add email. Email. After that, go to your email inbox and verify your email address. And now your email address is confirmed. Next, we're gonna scroll down a little bit and here we see verified sending domains. And here we are gonna authenticate our domain. So we're gonna click on set up a verified sending domain. So let's say I want to authenticate this domain. So poppyb.com, I'm gonna click on next. So now we need to update our DNS settings. So you can either do this manually. So by copy and pasting these settings, these values into your DNS settings of your house, but you can also let Kit do it for you. So I'm gonna let Kit do it for me. So I'm gonna click on set this up for me. I'm gonna click on continue and it's now analyzing where my domain is hosted so it can edit the DNS settings for me. So I host my domain on Hostinger. So I'll log in to Hostinger here. So I'm gonna click on continue. So for security reasons, we need to verify your identity. So I just received the verification code from my Hostinger account. I'm pasting in the code and I'm going to click on continue. So here it says we detected existing records at poppyb.com. So there is an existing DKIM and SPF value because I've tested this with another Git account. So I'm going to override these settings and I'm going to click on OK, continue. So please confirm that you would like to update these records. Yes, OK, continue. So poppyb.com is now configured. Changes typically take less than a few hours to go live. However, it can take up to 48 hours. OK, done. So that's all you have to do for verifying your domain or in other words authenticating your domain so next up we want to use our own domain when we send people to our landing pages right so if we publish a landing page so by default if you publish a landing page in kit it'll look something like this so this is the URL so this is my brand name and then we have kit and then dot com slash whatever name you're gonna give your landing page. But in other words, it will always include Git in the domain. And personally, I think that looks a little weird if someone doesn't know what Git is. Ideally, you want something recognizable in the URL, like your own brand name. So we're gonna fix that. So we're gonna set up a custom domain. So we're gonna click here on account settings. You can also go to the top right corner and click on settings over here. And then you're gonna click on domains. And then we're gonna scroll down a little bit and here we see custom domains. So I already have my domain. So I'm gonna click on connect an existing domain. So here's an important line. So you may add either a root domain. So for example, yourwebsite.com 
or a subdomain. So for example, pages.yourwebsite.com. So this is an important note. So if you already have a website running on your main domain, so if you visit my main domain, poppyb.com, you see I already have a website on this domain. That means you do not want to use your main domain over here in these settings because it will override your existing website and that's obviously not what you want. Instead, you want to use a subdomain. So depending on the goal of your landing page, you might want to use a subdomain like this. So for example, subscribe.poppyb.com. But let's say you're giving something away for free. You can, for example, use free.poppyb.com or maybe checklist.poppyb.com. So just choose whatever makes sense for what you're offering on the landing page. So in my case, I'm going to use checklist.poppyb.com because I'm giving away free checklists to grow the email list. So then over here, we have to choose which landing page and kit we want to connect to that subdomain, so the main domain. So I'm going to choose this one, the creator profile. I'm going to click on next. And now we need to update the DNS values for our domain. And unlike with the email setup, Kit doesn't do this part automatically. So we'll need to add those DNS settings you see over here manually. So as mentioned before, my domain is hosted with Hostinger. So I have to log into Hostinger to access the DNS menu. So this is my DNS menu over at Hostinger. And here I can add the DNS record. So if you have a different hosting, it might look a little bit different, but there should be somewhere an option where you can add new records to your DNS records tab. So we have to add three records. So I'm just going to start with the first one. So the type is an A record. So I'm going to go to DNS records and I'm going to add a new record, which is an A record by default, as you can see. So we don't have to change that part. So then we have a name and a value. So I'm going to go back to kit and the name is checklist. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in here, checklist. And then it says points two. So that's the value. So I'm going to copy this as well. I'm going to go back to Hostinger and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to click on add records. So it says an A record already exists on your domain DNS zone. By confirming, you will add an additional A record. I'm going to click on confirm. And then we have to add the other two as well. So I'm going to copy checklist again. Oh, it's already here apparently. So I'm going to go back here. So I only have to copy copy the value. I'm going to change this value. I'm going to click on add records. So here it gives a little warning. So having more than one record may cause your website to become inaccessible online. So I didn't really have a clue what they meant. So I asked ChatGPT, what does this mean? I'm just adding a subdomain for my website with the email marketing toolkit. So it gives a little explanation here and then I'm saying it again. So but Kit's instructions are to add these records, right? So I added the picture here and then it mentions you're absolutely right to follow the Kit's instructions. So go ahead and add all these three A records. This is normal and safe when the service provider kit instructs it. They're using multiple IPs for loading, balancing or failover, which is common with hosted tools and landing pages. So I'm just going to continue. I'm going to click on confirm and I'm going to add the last one as well. So I'm going to copy the value. I'm going to go back to the hosting or the DNS records tab. So again, a record checklist and then the new IP. I'm going to click on add records and I'm going to click on confirm again. So now we added three new records to our DNS records tab. So I'm going to go back to kit and then I'm going to click on validate. Validation failed. Double check your DNS records, but note it can take DNS servers 24 hours to update. If everything looks right, come back tomorrow to check. So we just added these three records, right? So it should be fine. So this is all you have to do. We'll just come back tomorrow to check it again. So now if you go back to settings and then domains, if you scroll down, now you can see it is set up properly. So all these records are verified. And if you go to landing pages now, so landing pages and forms, and you create a new landing page or select one of your existing landing pages, and go to settings and go to domain name. And here you can now select your new domain name. So for example, checklist.poppyb.com. So let's say I'm going to give this page URL test one. I'm going to click on add and I'm going to click on save. And now I'm going to click on publish. I'm going to click on share. And here we have our URL. And now as you can see, the landing page is accessible through the URL we just created. Keep in mind, it says not secure while my main domain is secure. So what's the issue with that? So that probably is because this is just a few minutes after I added the DNS settings. So after 24 hours, this URL should be secure as well. This is something that Kit usually handles automatically. So next, most of us are probably using social media to grow our email list, right? And honestly, 
what's the best way to grow an email list? It's using freebies. So in short, give something valuable away for free in exchange for an email address. Super simple, super effective. So now here's a quick tip if you're using Instagram to grow your email list. And the tip is use a DM automation tool like ManyChat. So ManyChat is a DM automation tool. You can use it for free, but it also has a paid plan as well. So this is a random account that uses ManyChat to give you a better idea of how this works. So what's the caption of this Instagram post? Like plus comment, love them. So it's probably a list what you'll receive. So let's just try it out. So let's say I post love them. So I'm gonna click on post. And now the DM automation tool should automatically send me what it promised me to send me, right? And here you can see how it works. So this is what I just received. My Amazon go-tos I'm loving for spring and summer. So I'm gonna click here, shop here. And now we get this link. So this is just a random example of how this works, but you can also use this to grow your email list. So if you log into ManyChat over here, you can see you can connect it to your ConvertKit account, so to your Kit account through the API. And you can set it up so that anyone who DMs you gets an automatic reply asking for an email address, for example. Then you can connect that DM automation tool through this integration here with Git so it automatically updates your email subscriber list. So no extra steps, super efficient and super powerful to grow your email list if you're using Instagram to grow your list. So here's a blog post on ManyChat's website. So how to collect emails in ManyChat. Step one, set up a keyword. So that's the same thing that we just saw here with this example. So the keyword she uses was love them. So write a post and ask your audience to comment on it with a keyword of your choice. So in that example, it was love them. So this automation is how they get their freebie. So they comment and then, so thanks for your comment. We can't wait to share our secret guide with you. We just need your email to proceed. Are you ready? And then we're waiting for the email address. But let's say someone doesn't want to share their email address or, or they just forgot about it. You can also send reminders. So if a contact has not responded, oops, it looks like you got too busy. No worries. Are you still interested in our guide? Yes, please. And then you can send them the guide immediately without them to send uh, their email address to you. And then step four will store the emails for you or you can integrate it with Git, as I mentioned before. So it automatically syncs with your Git account. So when and how should you use landing pages? So like I mentioned in the previous tip, if you're mainly using social media like Instagram to grow your email list, you're probably better off using a DM automation tool like ManyChat, like I mentioned in the previous tip, instead of relying on forms or landing pages inside Git. But if you have a website that's getting consistent traffic whether it's from Google organic search or through paid advertising, through uh, social media ads or Google ads, then using forms and landing pages is definitely a great way to grow your email list. And as you can see, I've used Kit as well for a long time. So for example, this specific form has generated more than 30,000 subscribers alone, but there are also other forms as you can see, 8,000 subscribers, more than 1,000 more than thousands, close to thousands, more than 3000. So forms is definitely a very good way to grow your email list. But you obviously need traffic to those forms and landing pages to get those subscribers. So here's an example. So this is my dog training website in the Netherlands. And on this blog post, which gets traffic from both organic Google searches and paid Google ads, I link to a free puppy schedule. So stuff like ideal feeding times, walking times, and sleeping times, etc. So here's one of the links that links to that free puppy schedule. So download the free puppy schedule, it says here. So this blog post alone converts at around 10%. So that means about 10% of the people who read this blog end up joining my email list, which is pretty solid, right? So here's again a link to that free schedule people can download. And I mentioned that organically throughout this blog post multiple times. So to create a landing page inside Git, you're gonna click on grow. And there you're gonna click on landing pages and forms. And then we're gonna create a new landing page. So here we can choose whether we're gonna use a form 
or a landing page. So with this specific blog post, I'm using a landing page. So I'm linking to a landing page for that free bumpy schedule. So that for that freebie I'm giving away, but you can also use a form that's fine as well. But in this example, I'm gonna choose the landing page. There are plenty of landing page templates as you can see. And if you're giving away a freebie, then this first one is fine, but you can also choose another one. So for example, maybe this one over here, I'm gonna click on choose. And here we can add an image of that particular freebie. So let's say I wanna edit this image. I'm gonna click on the image. I'm gonna click on replace. So this is an example image of another free download. And as you can see, it doesn't match perfectly. So I obviously would tweak this image a little bit so it matches uh, nicely into this container. So then you wanna tweak the text here to match the freebie you're giving away. So I tweaked it a little bit. So I tweaked the headline, the description of it. I changed the button text to download now. But for some reason, I cannot delete the heading over here, nor can I delete the white space here. But luckily we can add some custom CSS here and I'll show you how you can tweak this design so you can delete the white space and delete the heading here as well. So just as an example, I'm gonna add test here. And I'm gonna publish this landing page. I'm gonna click on publish. I'm gonna copy this URL. So now we want to delete the white space here and we do not want to show the headline here. So I'm gonna press the right mouse button. I'm gonna click on inspect. And as you can see here, we can see the name of the class. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna go to ChatGPT. And this is what I'm gonna say. I don't wanna show this class with CSS. So I copied the CSS class. I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna copy this code over here. I'm gonna go back to Git. I'm gonna go to general styles, scroll down a little bit. Here we have the custom CSS and I'm gonna paste that in here. And now as you can see, the headline is gone. We're gonna go back to the landing page because we also want to remove the white space here, right? And to find that white space, you just have to hover over these different classes over here. And as you can see, I just hovered over this one here and here, as you can see, this is the white space. So I'm gonna copy this class name as well. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT and I'm gonna say hide this class too. I'm gonna copy it again. I'm gonna go back to kids landing page. I'm gonna paste it in. And as you can see, the white space now is gone. So this just goes to show that you can do a lot of stuff inside CSS to tweak the landing page. And then we also have this built with kit logo here. So let's say I wanna remove that as well with CSS. I'm not sure if that's possible, but let's try it. Class two. I'm gonna copy it again. I'm gonna go back to Kit. I'm gonna paste it in here. And as you can see, the logo now is gone as well. So I'm gonna click on publish. I'm gonna click on share. Copy the URL to check how it looks. And this is the final result. No logo, no white space, no header. And by the way, if you wanna use your own domain, you can do that here as well, right? Settings, domain, and then select the domain you wanna use. Then to deliver that freebie, you're gonna go to settings and then go to incentive. And here is the incentive email. So whenever someone enters their email address and clicks on the download now button, this is the email they will receive. So important, confirm your subscription. Thanks for signing up. Click the link below to confirm your subscription and you'll be on your way. So you can tweak this email to, for example, something like this. So your free puppy schedule inside, confirm to get it. Thanks for signing up. Your free downloadable puppy schedule is ready. Just confirm your subscription using the button below and the download starts. Confirm your subscription and download free puppy schedule. This guide will help you stay on track, blah, 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 blah. We're excited to be part of your puppy journey. I'm gonna click on save. And then over here, you want to add the PDF of that particular freebie. So whenever someone enters their email address, they click download now, they will now receive this incentive. So that's it for this video. But if you like my teaching style, you'll definitely want to check out my full Kit online course. So what you're looking at here is a course I created specifically for beginners who want to learn how to use Kit step by step. And you're probably wondering, okay, but how much does this course cost? So here's the best part. It's completely free. It's free, bitches, it's free! It's free! So instead of charging $150 for it, I'm giving it away for free because Kit is actually covering the cost. All you need to do is head over to the link in the description of this video and sign up for a paid Kit account using that exact link. So once you've signed up for a paid 
Kith account using my link in the description. Just shoot me an email at info at creatorrack.com and I'll send you access to this online course. When you sign up through my link, Kit knows you came through that link and that's how they cover the cost of the course for you. So yeah, totally free because Kit is paying for it.